Coming up on Arirang News. On the second official day of President Yoon Song Yeol's state visit to Saudi Arabia, he emphasized the role of young people in South Korea and Saudi Arabia as the first movers in pioneering new areas. This said in his speech at King Saud University, encouraging cooperation between the younger generations of the two countries. A third convoy of trucks with aid reportedly enters via the Rafah crossing from Egypt into the blockaded Gaza Strip. But this comes after the Israeli military announced to ramp up airstrikes on Gaza with what it calls the next stage of the war. South Korea reports more cases of lumpy skin disease, a highly infectious disease that affects cattle, bringing the total at 17 so far. Authorities say they're doing all they can to contain the spread. Good evening, it's 9 p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us on Arirang News. President Yoon Song Yeol today embarked on the second official day of his state visit to Saudi Arabia. After his bilateral summit with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman the previous day, Yoon on Monday focused on future cooperation between not only the private sector but also the younger generations. We connect with our correspondent Woo Soo Young, who is traveling with the president. Good afternoon, Suyang. Good evening to you in Seoul. So let's start with the president's speech this morning, local time, where he addressed students at King Saud University. Walk us through the significance of this speech. Sure, Suyang. So it was a very meaningful speech indeed, not only calling on the first state visit to be made to Saudi Arabia by a South Korean leader, but President Yoon also became the first foreign world leader to speak at the prestigious university. That was really a strong example of how the two countries are now moving beyond their traditionally trade-based relations that largely focused on oil and construction. Now, that was pretty much the message that came out of the leaders' meeting on Sunday, and it was reinforced during Yoon's lecture to around 2,000 students today. Yoon said exchanges between Korea and Saudi Arabia date back more than a 1,000 years, and their special relationship since the 1970s helped set the stage for South Korea's rather dramatic economic development of the miracle on the hunt. Now, as the two countries continue to move ahead in a world of very rapid changes, the South Korean leader encouraged the students to become first movers who pioneer and lead new industries, noting that Korea's own rapid growth was very much the result of passion for education, as well as the efforts of young people. Now, encouraging people to people exchanges between the two economies uh, as they move into the post-oil era, President Yoon pledged to develop study abroad programs and scholarship schemes for Saudis in cutting-edge fields like bio, medical, and uh, renewable energy, and uh, as well uh, strength, as well as strengthening female leadership. As the president puts, uh, quite a special emphasis on the growing role of women in Saudi society. 장차 한국과 사우디아라비아의 우호 협력 관계는 양국의 학생과 전문가들이 활발히 교류하고 함께 연구할 때 더욱 깊어질 수 있습니다. And after his speech, the president had time to engage with the students in a Q&A session. And they asked a broad range of questions spanning everything from K-pop, language exchange, and opportunities to participate in Korea's leading industries as well, such as electric vehicles. Right, I see. And the president also has more engagements lined up on Monday and Tuesday before he leaves for Qatar. That's right. On Tuesday, President Yoon, sorry, on Monday, President Yoon is scheduled to uh, attend the Korea-Saudi Future Technology Partnership Forum at the King Abdulaziz uh, City for Science and Technology and deliver encouraging words at the event that's going to be attended by scientists from both countries. Now, he's going to be emphasizing the need for future-oriented technological cooperation between the two sides. Now, also, as this year marks the 50th anniversary of South Korean firms entering the Saudi construction market, the president will head to a commemoration event and likely set out the future of bilateral business ties going ahead. As you said, President Yoon will be travelling to Qatar for an official state visit on Tuesday, but first he's going to attend the prestigious 
Future Investment Initiative Forum dubbed the Davos in the Desert as the guest of honor. Now there, he's going to engage in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with moderator, where he'll be discussing South Korea's appeal as an economic and investment partner. And he's also going to talk about the present and future of Seoul's relations with the Middle East there as well. Now that's all from me. Now back to you. Well, thanks, Suyong, for keeping us updated and safe travels. Now, staying in Riyadh, part of the $15 billion of projects or dozens of business deals that were signed during an investment forum focused on high-tech and future industries. That includes Hyundai Motors building an EV plant in Saudi Arabia. Our correspondent Kim do has the details. As South Korea and Saudi Arabia deepen economic cooperation with multi-billion dollar projects between the two countries, an investment forum was held in light of President Yoon Song yeols visit to Riyadh. President Yoon stepping up in front of around 300 business leaders and government officials from both sides emphasized the synergy effect between the two countries. <laughs> According to the top office, 46 MOUs and deals have been signed from this event and around 30 were deals in high-tech industries and new businesses. This includes Hyundai Motors building an EV plant in Saudi Arabia as well as deals related to hydrogen energy production as Saudi Arabia prepares itself for the post-oil economy. South Korea's food and snack producer Nongshim signed deals with Saudi greenhouses to develop smart farms in the country. Punglim Pharmatech, a South Korean medical device manufacturer, agreed to create a Saudi plant. And there were deals in other new types of businesses such as robotics and aesthetics. For conventional areas such as infrastructure and energy, Korea National Oil Corporation and Saudi Arabia's state-run energy company Aramco signed a contract to cooperate in petroleum storage, as well as MOUs for cooperation in Saudi's new smart city construction projects. 양국 경제인 여러분, 이제 사우디는 아시아와 유럽, 아프리카를 연결하는 명실상부한 글로벌 허브 국가로 도약하고 있습니다. 대한민국과 사우디가 함께 써 내려갈 새로운 역사의 주인공은 바로 이 자리에 계신 경제인 여러분들입니다. In terms of Saudi's creation of new cities, President Yoon and the First Lady Kim Gunny visited the historical Saudi Arabian town of Daria near Riyadh soon after landing on Saturday. There, President Yoon was asked by Saudi officials to help South Korea participate in a $20 billion project to develop this region. Kim Do-yeon, Arirang News. Now moving on to the Israel-Hamas war. A third convoy of trucks entered Gaza on Monday, coming in from Egypt's side of the Rafah crossing with food, water and basic medical supplies. International efforts continue to free hostages in Gaza and prevent a wider regional conflict. But Israel continues to intensify its airstrikes on Gaza ahead of what its spokesperson described as the next stage of the war. Shinayong has the latest. For the third straight day, aid has been allowed into the Palestinian enclave of Gaza during a short window on Monday as Israel continued preparations for a ground offensive. According to Reuters, a third convoy of aid trucks entered the Rafah crossing from Egypt a day after another 17 trucks carried medical aid, food and water into Gaza following the 20 trucks of aid on Saturday. However, details about the exact number of trucks on Monday have not been disclosed. The United Nations says about 100 trucks per day are required to meet the needs of Gazans. U.S. President Joe Biden, in a virtual meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday, welcomed the entry of the first aid convoys into the Gaza Strip. 
The White House said both leaders affirmed their commitment to the ongoing humanitarian aid for Gaza. Meanwhile, Israel and Hamas engaged in limited clashes in Gaza on Sunday. Israel's military said Monday its ground forces had mounted limited raids into Gaza overnight and added that the airstrikes were focusing on sites where Palestinian militants were assembling to attack any wider Israeli invasion. An Israeli soldier was killed by an anti-tank missile during a raid into Gaza City aimed at clearing the area and gathering intelligence about hostages held by Hamas. During one of the raids, an Israeli Defense Forces soldier was killed and three soldiers were wounded. Their families have been notified. This came after the Israeli military announced that it would strengthen its airstrikes on Gaza ahead of what its spokesperson described as the next stage of the war. Israel ramped up its bombing of targets on three fronts, including airstrikes on the West Bank. Amid growing fears that the fighting between Israel and Hamas could escalate into a wider geopolitical conflict, CNN reports that the Biden administration has pressed Israel to delay its ground invasion of Gaza for the release of more hostages held by Hamas and to allow more humanitarian aid to reach the area. Shin Ha-yong, Arirang News. Over at the National Assembly in Seoul, major changes were spotted today in both the ruling People Power Party and the main opposition Democratic Party as both try to seek a breakthrough. Yonsei Medical School professor In Yo Han, known as the Blue Eyed Korean, was named chairman of the ruling party's Innovation Committee. And Democratic Party leader Yi Jae Myung returned to his party duties after over a month. Our political correspondent Kim Jong Shil explains. Medical professor In Yohan is known as the blue-eyed Korean. Originally from the U.S., he became South Korea's first special naturalized citizen back in 2012. He's now in charge of changing the dynamics within the ruling People Power Party as the new chairman of its innovation committee. Basically, In will now strive to regain voters' trust after the PPP's crushing defeat in a by-election in Seoul's western Gangseogu district. Chairman In told reporters on Monday that he's, quote, pushing for unity in the sense of not hating those with different opinions. He said that many people in the party need to listen, adding there will be no change without sacrifice. People Power Party leader Kim gi hyun explained what the Innovation Committee will do. The Innovation Committee that will be centralized around Chairman In Yo Han will have full autonomy and independence over its composition, scope of work, and agenda, among other things. Kim especially stressed the importance of reconnecting with the public. This was the same day the main opposition Democratic Party leader Lee Jae Myung returned to his party duties after more than a month. He was recovering from a 24-day hunger strike that was held to protest the Yoon Sung-yeol government. His first message after returning was focused on the people's livelihoods and unity within his party. We need to unite and work together to bring enough innovation that will meet the people's expectations. I no longer want the consent to arrest incident to slow us down. The DP leader also gave a rare compliment to the government, saying the DP was in full support of President Yoon's recent decision to increase the number of medical students. This is a bit to tackle the lack of doctors in key fields and the increasing demand for medical services in a rapidly aging society. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. South Korea reports more cases of lumpy skin disease, a highly infectious disease that affects cattle, bringing the total at 17 so far. Authorities have freed up more funds to contain the spread. Uni has details. South Korea's first ever case of lumpy skin disease was discovered last week when four cows were found to have had symptoms at a farm in Seosan, Chungcheongnam-do province. In response, the Ministry of the Interior and Safety announced on Sunday that special subsidies worth over 10 billion Korean won, or almost 7.5 million U.S. dollars, will be provided to halt the spread of the disease. Subsidies will be allocated to support disease prevention activities by local governments, including the operation of base disinfection facilities. The government has raised the crisis alert level to serious, the highest level in its four-tier system. 
And starting Monday, the Ministry of the Interior and Safety is conducting joint inspections with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs in five West Coast regions. Cattle farms in Gyeonggi-do, Chungcheongnam-do, Jeollabuk-do, Jeollanam-do provinces and Incheon will be inspected as part of a disease prevention process. Lumpy skin disease is a viral disease in cattle transmitted by blood-feeding insects with symptoms including blisters and lower milk production. The disease does not pose a threat to humans. However, authorities say they will call infected cattle to prevent any possibility of them entering the food system. Some 50,000 cows will also be vaccinated. After its discovery in Zambia in 1929, lumpy skin disease was considered an endemic disease in Africa for several decades. However, after 2010, it began to spread to European and Asian countries. Authorities say that although there might be a temporary price increase for Korean Hanu beef, the overall impact on supply and price, including milk prices, is expected to be limited. Ian Hee, Arirang News. Exports expanded close to 5% on-year during the first 20 days of this month. According to the Korea Customs Service on this Monday, the value of exports rose 4.6% on-year to 33.8 billion U.S. dollars amid greater shipments to the U.S. and Japan. The average export value per working day also gained 8.6% on-year. Given this latest findings, expectations are running high for a tangible rebound in exports within this year. Two of the country's leading electric vehicle and battery manufacturers have inked a supply chain agreement for the first time. Earlier on this Monday, battery maker Samsung SDI announced that it'll supply Hyundai Motor with electric vehicle batteries for seven years starting in 2026. Samsung SDI will supply batteries made in its plant in Hungary to Hyundai Motors EV sites in Europe. Now, earlier this year, Samsung SDI sealed similar deals with General Motors and BMW. Defense companies at the Seoul International Aerospace and Defense Exhibition, or Seoul ADEX 2023, have signed business contracts worth more than six billion U.S. dollars. The, organizer, the organizers of the country's leading arms exhibition revealed Monday that this is a sharp increase from the contract signed in 2021. They attributed the increase to rising global awareness and trust in Korean defense products. This year's event, which wrapped up Sunday, was the largest ever to be held with a record participation of 550 entities from 35 countries. Overseas military officials reportedly showed great interest in South Korea's locally developed supersonic fighter jet, the KF-21, as well as the K-2 tank and multiple launch rocket system, Cheonmu. Korea ranks eighth highest in terms of employment gender gap among 38 OECD member states. According to an OECD report on Monday, Korea's employment rate in the second quarter of 2023 was 76.92% for men and 61.36% for women, translating into a gap of 15.56 percentage points. The OECD average gap stands at 13.85 percentage points. While Korea's female employment numbers have expanded over the past decade, they still stand low. Turkey, meanwhile, had the lowest female employment rate at 35.34%. Groundwater pollution on Jeju Island is worsening and chemical fertilizers and pesticides used in farming have been identified as the main causes. Efforts to prevent pollution are being carried out through research and the introduction of microbial farming methods, which are even gaining international popularity. Chong Eun-ju has the details. Water sprayed under halabong trees where a lot of fibrous roots grow attached to the main roots. This is the result of using microbial fertilizers. 
No matter how good something is, farmers cannot afford to use it if it's expensive. Farmers can sustainably use the GCM microbial farming method and achieve low-input, sustainable agriculture without there being too much of a financial strain. If farmers continue to use this method, it can solve Jeju Island's groundwater pollution problem. As we enter a carbon-neutral era, interest in environmentally friendly agriculture that does not use chemical fertilizers and pesticides is growing. Efforts to produce and consume safe agricultural products are as active on an international level as food security, which has gained importance due to disruptions in the supply chain. All over the world, uh, uh, governments are pushing to have farmers use the technology to be more focused with the fertilizer. Eco-friendly farming methods being developed and actively promoted in South Korea are also gaining popularity abroad. This is thanks to their proven effectiveness demonstrated in actual farming, such as medicinal marijuana farms in California. We've already exported to the USA and Vietnam and aim to export to Indonesia and the Philippines. We'll make efforts to expand this technology globally. This eco-friendly K-farming method, also recognized at international conferences, is anticipated to elevate South Korea's position globally as an agriculturally advanced country. Jung Eun-ju, Arirang News. Now on the culture front. South Korea celebrates October as Culture Month every year, and this year's event took place in Shinangun County, Jeollanamdo Province, this past weekend. And what was worth noticing this year was that an island in the region has transformed into a stage for the Culture Month for the very first time. Our culture correspondent Song Yujin was there. Way down in the southern part of South Korea is Shinangun County in Jeollanamdo Province. This area is made up of more than a thousand small islands. One of these islands is Chaundo, the host of this year's Culture Month. Korea has celebrated October as Culture Month since 1972 to deepen public appreciation and engagement with the arts and culture. Different places have taken their turn in hosting the celebration, but Chaundo is the first island to do so. One of the highlights this year was a lecture by American artist James Terrell. Hailed as the virtuoso of light, he's known for his large-scale installations using light and space, such as his Sky Space series. Throughout his six-decade career, Terrell has developed a strong passion for showcasing art in areas that are mostly inaccessible. We generally look at culture as being in the big cities. <clears throat> of course, that makes a certain kind of culture as well. And I'm very interested in taking art into nature um, because then you can have a more powerful expression. I think also it's good sometimes to take a journey to go to art so that helps prepare you for it. This idea fits perfectly with Shinangun County's Island and Art Project, which aims to change its isolated remote islands into places for art. Part of this plan is building the James Terrell Art Museum on Nodedo Island. Node is the island that I think would be very good for this. I like it partly because there is no bridge. That is, you actually have to journey by boat, another way to get there. And also, um, <clears throat> the surrounding of, of water completely is something I think is, is special. Another standout is music. Students from a local elementary school put on the Shinan traditional performance Handai, featuring dancing and singing. 104 pianists representing the 1,004 islands of Shinan took the stage, playing classical music to traditional Korean folk songs. So from hosting this year's Culture Month to its goal of becoming a hub for world-renowned artists, Shinangun County is evolving into a new center for arts and culture. Song Yujin, Arirang News, Shinan. The nation can expect moderate fall conditions for the next few days. Temperature gaps won't be too wide tomorrow, with readings hovering around the seasonal average. Central regions, including Seoul, will see showers, but conditions will stay quite mild. 
As for the overall amount of rainfall, the Seoul metropolitan area will see 5 to 10 millimeters. Gangwon-do, Chungcheong-do provinces will see around 5. Due to unstable atmospheric conditions, thunder and lightning may follow at times. For parts of the east coast, conditions are especially dry. Strong winds will be blowing from time to time. The combination of dry air and strong winds are conducive to the spread of wildfires. Please be extra careful with anything that can cause a spark. Partly cloudy to overcast skies are expected for the morning hours. So I'll be starting off at 12 degrees Celsius. Daytime highs in Seoul will get up to 19 degrees, Gwangju 22, Gyeongju will be topping out at 23 degrees. For the remainder of the work week, rainy spells and cloudy skies will take over. It's all for now, and here are the weather conditions around the world. That is all for this Monday night newscast. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest news. Hope everyone has a great start of the week.